guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and we're gonna dye some cross stitch fabric today. So I got a questions before and how I do it. Everybody has their own way. This is how I do it. I have no training. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just throwing stuff together. Um, this is Artiste is Zweigart fabric. It's 100% cotton. And this is 22 count. Every count of fabric is gonna dye up differently. Every brand of fabric is gonna dye up differently and pretty much every piece of fabric is gonna dye up differently. That's just kind of how it goes. Now, my materials. I have a kitty litter pan from the Dollar Tree to contain the dye mess. I have dyes, permanent dyes. A uh, couple of these are from the Dollar Tree. They are tie-dye, works just fine. And then I have Rit dye. I'm gonna go with a blue. So I wanna try some blue-gray. I have rubber gullets. A, nobody needs to dye their hands blue, ever. Also, hot water. So I'm gonna turn you around. We're gonna chit chat for a minute. Oh, I got a mess over here. What I'm doing is washing this fabric out. I'm going to use a little soap, right, on my hands because this dye, this fabric, when it comes, has a sizing on it or a starch on it, and that could stop it from taking the dye evenly. I'm doing a light blue gray because I want to use it for ornaments and I thought that would be fantastic. Now, when you dye your own fabric, you do rinse it out and all of that, but it's not really color fast anymore. I mean, I wouldn't guarantee that it's color fast anymore, but this is just for me. I don't sell this or anything like that, so I'm not worried too terribly much about that. Now, you, if you buy hand-dyed fabric or custom-made flosses and over dyes and all that, you just want to test it on your own. Also, this fabric is called Hardanger. Hardanger? Yeah, Hardanger. And it's, uh, but you can cross-stitch on, I do all the time. I like the, the 22 count. Okay, so I've washed and I've rinsed or in Ohio, I've washed and rinsed all my fabric. And I will have to, you know, once this is done and dry and I'll iron it, I'm gonna sew the edges because this fabric it's specifically frays a lot on the edges, so. All right. So I'm just putting it over here for right now because what we are gonna do is I'm gonna bring you down so you can see, sorry, here we go. Okay, so this container I only use with dye. I only use this kitty litter pan with dyes. This is just how I roll. So we need hot water, right? I'm gonna, and I'm just getting hot tap water. My tap water is very hot. You can use tea kettle water, you can use whatever. So I have hot water, I need to dry my hands, and I am gonna use something. I need a stirring, something or other. And I'm gonna use something that I will then not use as in food anymore, and this is just a Dollar Tree spatula. So now we'll now stay with all of this stuff, because, oh, I should have opened this before I put on rubber gloves, but, I'll show you like any of this dye. I also put on a black t-shirt for the same reason. Okay, now the good thing is you can build layers when doing this. So I would start off myself pretty light, right? This is a royal blue. And I know it looks dark in this container, but what you would do and I probably should have something protecting my countertops, but you 
And if you can see, that's the color it will be. So I just put a little splash of dye. I'm not making a recipe. I'm not keeping a recipe. I'm just making it as I go. So in here, I've doubled my fabric. I feel like it'll be fine. Kind of scrunched it up a little bit. I don't want this overly modeled. It's gonna be ornaments, so pretty small. And I also don't want to use all this dye. So I'm just gonna kinda, cause I wanna go over it with gray or add some gray to it. So I'm building some color here. Also, you don't wanna spill it on your floor. That's a good plan too. This dye, well, is exactly what it says. It's dye. It's going to cover and color anything it can get its hands on. This first layer I'm not overly concerned about because, like I said, I'm going to be building some layers. I love watching people do this because everybody seems to have their own kind of takeaway of how they dye up their fabric. So, I like this color. This is good, right? Good, good color. What I'm gonna do is dump out the leftover, like that. What will happen is, if I left it here long enough, the fabric would absorb all of the dye and you would just have water, like clear water if I didn't oversaturate, but I did a little bit. So this blue, which I really like this blue, I'm not mad at all, but I want a little darker to it. So I'm gonna add a little pearl gray and then just like a little bit and hope for the best, yeah? Yeah. But this is what you do. If you start slow and build your colors up that way, you can just stop when you get the color that you want. If you try to go, bleach will take this off my counter, by the way. If I try to go too fast, um, then you can go too dark. I've done that, and there's no coming back from that. You just have a dark fabric. But also, if I was doing this like not for my own personal use, I would maybe um, run it through like a coffee filter. I'm gonna put a little dash of green in here. And I mean, just like a little tab dot. Also, if you had too many colors, you're gonna end up with brown or black, probably brown. All right, I had that on my hand. So here we go. And I mean, this is like super easy. You just have to have a color in mind. And like, I love a caramel that's got a little orangey to it. And then I mix it with a little tan to get like my neutrals and more natural. And trust me, I buy plenty of fabrics. This is not hurting anybody's business. Oh, I like it. Hurting anybody, you know. I'm gonna buy what I want from them, but I also think it's fun to dye my own. So when I get, like I think this is going to be the finished color, maybe. Have to see again just kind of get it in here and then I mush it with my hands and the reason I do that is I want to make sure like I said I don't want this overly modeled if I wanted a lot of color variation I would put it in a smaller vessel and crump it up like that and then it would get a lot of different differentiations in color but I don't want to do that I want this and then I'm going to do it one more time but I think I'm gonna do just gray over the top because I think I will like that muted color, but look at that, isn't that so pretty? And there is, there is color differentiation in here. Look at there, some white. I may need to add a little more actually on this side. We can do that. There we go. I don't just want it too white, that's all. Okay, so while this is doing its thing in here, I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit. We're gonna mix up some gray. So I'm just running this down the sink, washing this out. Now, red dye is not a danger to you. I just prefer not to use dishes that are gonna have food involved. 
I just think that's a bad idea. Um, there are dyes like acid dye that you would use to dye. You can use on cotton and um, wool and things. Those are toxic. You do not want to use those without a respirator, nor do you want to use those without um, proper ventilation in your home. Just read the kit, you know, read it carefully. A lot of the acid dyes also come in powder form, and this is already, now you can get Rit dye in powder, and if you do, I would wear a mask. I buy it in liquid, so I'm not dealing with those particles. Now I'm gonna kind of crunch this up a little bit. And we're just gonna do, should I do gray or tan over it? I think gray. I think we don't wanna bring in any browns. Maybe, I don't know. No, I think brown will be bad. Brown bad. Okay. And this is called pearl gray. It looks dark, but it's not really overly dark. Let's see. Yeah, see? It's just gonna give us this little oomph on top of here. That's a technical word, oomph. Okay. And then, the beauty is, it's gonna get just a tad bit lighter when it dries sometimes, but it's not gonna do anything terrible. Like, if this is going to be the color. And, and then I'm gonna do this pretty quick. As far as sit in the gray, flip it, and then I'm gonna wash it out and let it dry. And I'm just washing it again in my sink with a little soapy water to get any of the excess dyes out, and then I'll let it dry, and I will show you when it's finished. Guys, here's the blue-gray. Oh, I love it. I just feel like this 22 count is underrated. It's fun. So that is what we got, this blue-gray. I'm super happy with it. I love the modeling, and I think my ornaments are gonna look fantastic. Hope you enjoyed.